Blue Driver Nation, how you doing? This is Jim and Chris and we're back again, this time on a 2007 Honda Civic. We're gonna tackle the sometimes very nasty job on this car of the water pump, Chris. This can be an easy job. There's one bolt that can either make this the easiest job on earth or it's gonna completely screw us over. Time will tell how this is gonna go. Now one extra point, we are gonna be taking off the tensioner now, so if your car's mileage is really getting up there, this might be a good time for you to replace that tensioner and belt too, since it's already gonna be off. You don't wanna do that again later. Okay, so we hope luck is with us on this one. Hope that bolt comes out. If not, we're gonna show you some tricks to save you a ton of time. Let's get to it. These are the tools you need to change your water pump. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the splash shield. The splash shield folds up into the wheel well here. Once it's gone, we'll be able to see all the pulleys, all the belts, and it's gonna make it a lot easier to get to a couple of the bolts that are on the back side of the water pump. All right, to remove the clip, you take a trim removal tool or a screwdriver, pry it under the cap, you might need to work it a little bit, pry down, this releases the clip, and then you can just pull if you're lucky, it's gonna come off like that, but you're probably gonna break a few of them, so it might be a good idea to have a spare or two ready. There you go, first broken clip. Now we've got two clips in the wheel well. Right now we're on the driver's side. One right here and one on the back there. And then finally, there's a little tab right here that's usually in that hole. You can see it popped out on its own, but you might need to wiggle it a little bit just to pop it out. Now we'll go do the other side, which is exactly the same. To do the water pump, you've got to drain most of the coolant. While we're at it, we're just going to replace everything, so we're going to drain the system completely. Before draining, we're going to take the radiator cap off. You want to take a lot of precautions here, make sure everything is completely cool. If there's any chance of any pressure at all, we'll use a rag, we'll have safety glasses on. Just want to avoid being sprayed with hot coolant if at all possible. The radiator petcock is this white valve right here. To open it up, you just turn it counterclockwise. It's possible that it might be a little bit stiff. If it is, you can use a pair of pliers. This could take a while, so I'm gonna go take a break. To make things easier, we're gonna take off the passenger side front wheel. You don't have to do this. Uh, part of the reason we're doing it is because it'll just make it easier for us to show you what's going on. If you don't wanna take the wheel off, what you can do is turn the wheel all the way to the right, and then you'll have enough room to get your arm in and you should be able to see what you're doing. Before you jack up the car, make sure the parking brake is on and the wheels are chopped. We're gonna lift the car using the jack point behind the tow hook on the front subframe. and we're gonna support the car with a jack stand on the factory jack point. The factory jack point is the thickest point right here. And you can see it kind of folds over on itself. We're gonna take the wheel off using a 19 millimeter socket. We're going to disconnect the battery by removing both clamps by disconnecting the 10 millimeter bolts on each side. Negative first. Just to play it safe, we're going to take something like the cap off our penetrating oil and put it over the positive lead just so you can't accidentally short them out. In a perfect world, at this step, we'd loosen the three bolts holding the water pump pulley on. What you'll probably find is that they're seized, and as soon as you start applying torque, the water pump pulley just starts spinning. There's not enough tension in the bolt to hold it in place. It is worth trying first, though, because you might get lucky. The water pump pulley is on the passenger side. 
about midway down the engine. You'll see it down here. The water pump pulley is right here. You can see there are three bolts. One on the left, one on the right, one on the bottom. If everything works out well, you can put a wrench on them and the tension of the belts will hold the pulley steady enough to break the torque. In the real world, the belt's probably gonna slip. So we're not gonna do it at the stage and we'll show you what to do if the belt slips later on. This also isn't 100% necessary, but just to make things easier, we're gonna remove the alternator. Uh, there are two reasons. The first reason is that it just gives us a lot more room to work in. The alternator is kind of sitting right on top of our work area. The other thing is, I mentioned earlier that you might have some trouble getting the bolts loose that hold the water pump pulley on. With the alternator out of the way, we can access the back of the pulley and we can basically jam a screwdriver through one of the holes in the pulley to hold it in place while we break the torque in the bolts. You'll see that in a couple steps. Now we're going to take the belt off. To relieve the belt tension, we're going to use a 19 millimeter wrench. We're going to use the box end on the tensioner right here. This is a hydraulic tensioner, so we're gonna put the wrench over it. We're gonna to push towards the back of the car. We're gonna go gently, slowly, and then it's gonna compress a little piston, relieving the belt tension, then we're just gonna slip the belt off the alternator. I don't have enough clearance here to use any of my sockets, so I'm gonna use a 19 millimeter wrench. Ideally, you'd have one with a zero degree offset here, but a normal box end wrench is gonna be fine. So we're gonna slide it over the end might need to pull this hard line out of the way a little bit just to get it on. And now I'll show you a little trick. We're going to use a larger 22 millimeter wrench as a cheater to give us a little more leverage so we don't have to push so hard to take the belt tension off. So the trick here is you take the box into your second wrench and now you've got some extra leverage to work with. All right, we're going to push forward slowly. Careful that your cheater wrench doesn't slide off to the side. Now we're gonna slide the belt off, being careful not to put our finger between the belt and any of the pulleys. And slowly release the tensioner. Remove the battery cable using a 10 millimeter socket. Pull up on this rubber boot, push in on the clip, and pull up. Now we're going to push in on this clip here, disconnect. Ideally this connector would just come right off that bracket. You might find that it's so seized together that you can't move it, you might risk breaking off this tab entirely. So I'm just going to take a 10 mil and remove this bracket completely. Then, if you're lucky, you can pry up in this tab right here, and this will just pull off the bracket. If it doesn't, then the same thing applies. You can just take a 10 mil and remove it. The alternator is held on with two 12 millimeter bolts. There's one here on the back, just under that bracket. There's a second one down here underneath the pulley. Don't mistake that bolt with the one further forward, which holds on the tensioner. If you got a couple of extra minutes, it'd be a really good idea to take some of the penetrating oil of your choice, spray down that bolt on the back and the one under the pulley. Uh, if you're gonna do this, put down some cardboard or something to prevent overspray onto the belt and the other pulleys. And then maybe go take a break for a couple of minutes just to make your life a little bit easier. We need to remove this wire. We could take this bracket off, but there's not much clearance. We don't really have enough room to get a socket on those bolts. We could use a wrench. I'm just gonna take a screwdriver, a trim clip tool or something like that. Press in on the back, wedge it a little bit, press in on the back side, wiggle a little bit. And it should pop right out. Then I'll just do the same thing for the bottom. Now we remove the two 12 millimeter bolts. And our second bolt, you can see it's a lot shorter, and I'm gonna put that in the official parts tray. And remove the alternator. 
If it sticks at all, you can wiggle it a little bit. Or, if necessary, you can use a pry bar. Let's take off the belt. This is where removing the wheel and the splash shield really pay off. The tensioner is held on with two bolts. They can be a little bit sticky sometimes, so I'm gonna take some penetrating oil. I'm gonna spray down this bolt here, and then I'm also gonna spray down the pivot bolt for the tensioner, which you can't see right now, but I'll show you how to get to it. Here's what your tensioner looks like. This is where it bolts up next to the alternator. This is the pivot bolt. This is the one that might give you a little bit of grief. Now you might think you're gonna spray around here with some penetrating oil, but that's not really gonna do much because it's a pretty long bolt. What you'll need to do is spray your penetrating oil down the back where it threads into the block. You'll have to probably put a little, you'll probably have to spray quite a bit in there. It'll run down and then hopefully some will get into the threads. On our existing tensioner, that's the part we were talking about that bolts up next to the alternator. That's the pulley right there. So you'll want to spray your penetrating oil in there. If you were lucky earlier, you already loosened these three bolts on the water pump pulley. Most likely you couldn't. So here's a trick for getting them loose. You can take a screwdriver, insert it through the back into the hole. This will wedge the pulley in place. You might be able to fit a socket in there. None of mine fit, so I'm just gonna take a 10 millimeter wrench, use the box end. And then just do that two more times. And now we remove the bolts. Talking about luck again, if you're really lucky, you'll just be able to wiggle this off. One trick is, you push hard on one side, maybe use a pry bar, maybe tap it with a hammer. Rotate 180 degrees. Good news and bad news. We'll start off with the good news, which is this 12 millimeter bolt right here. And now the bad news. This guy right here, that's your pivot bolt. It's only an eight millimeter Allen head bolt. The torque, the spec torque anyways, isn't that high, but after 12 years, it can be pretty hard to get out. Option number one, breaker bar, maybe a ratchet, Allen head socket, eight millimeter. If you're really lucky, then you'll just put that right on there. You can come in from the top of the engine bay and it'll just break loose. I wasn't so lucky. Twice. This one's even impact rated. Option number two, impact gun, extension, U-joint, Allen socket. You can come in through the wheel well. You can get on the bolt, but with the U-joint, you might not get enough torque, you might not get, not get enough impact on that bolt to get it out. Didn't work for me either. So we're gonna demonstrate the third option, which is removing the passenger side motor mount, dropping the motor a couple of inches, once this is done, you'll have direct access through the wheel well. You won't need U-joints, you won't need anything else, you can get straight on the bolt. Now there is one other thing to talk about here. There is a possibility that you might strip out the head of the bolt or you could break the bolt itself. If you strip out the head of the bolt, then what you can do is you can drill out the head, pull the tensioner off. At this point, the bolt won't be under tension anymore. You have direct access to the base of the threads. You can spray it down with penetrating oil. You can apply heat directly to the threads with, your, with any luck. Vice grips, it'll come right out. The real nightmare scenario is if the bolt breaks off in the block. If that happens, your only option is to drill it out, tap it, and hope that you go in flush to the surface and then your tensioner goes on straight. Normally we don't cheat these repairs, you're seeing them as we do them. This time we cheated, we had to cheat. I had a hard time getting this off. It took me about a week of alternating between some penetrating oil, hitting with the impact gun, applying heat, just over and over again, just a little bit every day, and eventually it just popped loose. Now all this said, we're not trying to dissuade anyone from trying this. It's just all about the patience. 
There's no easier way to break a bolt and strip out a head than just pushing too hard or maybe backing off for a bit when you should let it sit for a bit with some oil on it. So just approach this with patience, don't push your luck, and just take your time. We're gonna support the engine using a jack under the oil pan. It's a good idea to use something like a block of wood, or in this case, a hockey puck, between the jack and the oil pan. Now we're not actually lifting anything here. We're just gonna raise it up until it's just touching the oil pan. We don't wanna actually bear any weight yet. Remove 17 millimeter bolts here, here, and here. Pull out. And put aside. Another 17 millimeter bolt right here. 19 millimeter bolt here, 19 millimeter not here. One extra note, if there's a lot of corrosion and rust built up right here, take a wire brush first and just try to clean it off a little bit. You don't want to risk this nut jamming halfway off. Now, to get this thing off here, you might need to jack up the engine just a little bit. Right now there's some tension on that stud there and you won't be able to slide it off. Now we can drop the engine just a little bit just until we can see that bolt through the wheel well. Go slow dropping the engine, it shouldn't go too far. So just to reiterate, this is a worst case scenario here. We want to avoid doing this if at all possible, but in our case, this was necessary to be able to get that bolt out. So now you can see it's just dropped below the frame here. So we can get on it with an impact and we should be able to remove it. And there she is. And here's the tensioner. Let's get that water pump off. Five 10 millimeter bolts. One, two, three, one down here, and the last one up here. All right, there's the last bolt. We've got a drip tray in place, and off comes the water pump. Maybe wear some safety glasses. There we go. I don't want to hear any jokes about the shape of this water pump. All right, so here's the new one with the Detroit Red Wing shape. Uh, you can see it has a new gasket. You want to make sure that you're using a new gasket, not reusing the gasket. This one looks kind of okay, so I'm not sure what's up with it, but uh, out with the old, in with the new. Before installing the new water pump, we're just gonna clean off the mating surface. And now we'll install the new water pump. Make sure the gasket stays in place while you're fitting the water pump. Here, let me give you an assist on that. Torque all five 10 millimeter bolts to 8.7 foot pounds or about 104 inch pounds. Since it was so much work to get that tensioner bolt off, we're gonna replace the entire tensioner right now so we don't have to do it again in the future.
Torque the pivot bolt to 40 foot-pounds. Now for the 12 millimeter bolt. Which we are torquing to 17 foot-pounds. Put the tensioner pulley back on. Now we're going to torque the three pulley bolts to 10 foot-pounds. We're going to use a similar trick as before. We're going to take a screwdriver, jam it in there. We're going to put the motor mount back on now. If you didn't have to drop the motor in the first place, you can skip ahead a bit. Otherwise, we'll get through this pretty quick. First, we're going to jack the motor back up so it's about level. Slide on this bracket. Now we're going to put on the 19 millimeter nut. We're not going to tighten that yet. Next, we're going to line up this back hole, put in the second 19 mil, but leave it a little bit loose. You might have to pull the motor towards you a little bit to make this last hole line up. Now, if this bolt binds up a little bit, you can just kind of shake the motor gently a little bit just to make sure that there's no tension on it from the bracket. Now we're going to torque these guys up. 52 foot-pounds, 52 foot-pounds, 54 foot-pounds. Now, one extra note, the manual does call for these two bolts, or this bolt and this nut to be replaced. Um, I'm not going to do that here right now, but it might be a good idea for you to use new bolts on an installation. The long bolt goes in the back, and same as the two on the motor down there, Honda does call for these three bolts to be replaced. And this bracket goes on the left like this. And now we'll torque all three brand new bolts to 47 foot-pounds. And now we're done with the jack. Motor didn't fall out. Looks good. Before we install the new belt, there is one thing to know. If you've got a 2006 Civic, there was a TSB issued because of an issue they were having with breaking pivot bolts. Part of the recall was that they changed the routing of the belt. So you might see a diagram in your user manual or there might be something on the hood that shows you how the belt's supposed to be routed. That's actually changed, so you'll want to follow the new steps and not the old one. Also, you might find that the belt length is actually slightly different because of the new routing. This car here has hydraulic power steering. If you have EPS, then there's going to be a different routing. We'll include that in the notes. Uh, you know you have hydraulic power steering if there's a power steering reservoir up here. We're going to start on the left by running around the power steering pump. We'll leave the power steering pump, go up over the crank, come up off the crank, go around the tensioner and back down. After the tensioner, we're going to go around the crank, leave the crank and go up over the water pump. Then from the water pump, it's down around the AC pulley comp or compressor pulley. So 
So we'll just put that in place. The long bolt. Goes in the back like that. The shorter bolt goes underneath the pulley. We're gonna torque both bolts to 17 foot-pounds. And the bottom bolt is 17 foot-pounds as well. We're gonna use the same 19 millimeter box end wrench as before. Grab our 22 to use as a cheater. And slowly compress that piston. Take the belt, being very careful not to get your finger between the belt and the pulley. Slide it over the alternator and slowly let off on the wrench. Now we're gonna reconnect all the cables and brackets. All right, we're gonna take that cable we disconnected before, and we're gonna push those white clips back in. And we're gonna reinstall this bracket. Now we'll reconnect the battery. Positive lead goes first. And now the ground. All right, let's put the wheel back on. And then 80 foot pounds. Okay, last step, just refill the coolant. Before we start filling up the coolant, I'm just gonna double check and make sure that the petcock is completely closed on the radiator. There's nothing worse than hearing all your expensive brand new coolant pouring all over the floor. Remove the cap from the radiator. Depending on the kind of car you have, whether it's two or four door or automatic or manual transmission, there's a different amount of coolant that it calls for. It's all a little bit over five liters. We'll include the actual capacities for each type of car in the description of the video. So we're gonna fill up to the top of the filler neck. Then we're just gonna squeeze our radiator hoses a little bit just to try to get out any trapped air. And then top it up again. Now we're gonna bleed any remaining air into the system. First, we're gonna loosely install the radiator cap. We're not gonna tighten it because we don't want it to hold any pressure. Okay, one of the last steps of burping all the air out of the system is to start the car, run it at idle until the radiator fan comes on, goes off, comes on again a second time, at which point you're gonna turn the key off and then top off again and you're done. Chris, get her going. All right, coolant's all topped up and bled. Now we're gonna start up the motor one last time and we're just gonna check on the passenger side, on the ground, we're gonna look for leaks coming from the water pump. So we had our battery disconnected, which means that your radio might be in anti-theft mode. You'll notice this is the case if you try to turn it on and you just get enter code on the screen. If you don't know how to unlock your radio, then we've got another video covering this and we'll include a link in the description. Reinsert the tabs on both sides in the front of the fender. And then two clips per side. Perfect. Okay, so that didn't go as well as we thought, or as well as we hoped. Sometimes that happens in this game. 
but we did show you some great tips on how to save yourself a ton of money and still get this job done. If this saved you money, if this saved you time, please like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. This might have been called Fear the Fix, but fear no fix.